Hello, today I'm sharing some underrated beauty products that I've been loving and think you will too, and that I think need more recognition, more love, because I just don't hear people talking about these very much. I love doing these underrated product videos, and it's been about six months since my last one, so I'm excited to get into this. Welcome back to my channel, welcome if you're new, and let's get started with these beauty products that I think need a little more love because I think they're fantastic. Because of what I do, I test a lot of beauty products. I'm also in my upper 40s, so I'm always on the hunt for good, effective skincare products that will keep my skin as supple and youthful and as healthy as possible, as long as possible. So I test products out to see what I can recommend to you and what I won't recommend to you. But because I have sensitive skin with rosacea, finding effective products that don't make my skin react can be pretty tricky. So you may remember if you're a subscriber a while back, I shared a retinol treatment product that was kind of new that I was really liking. It was working really, really well for me. Now, if you're not familiar with retinol, the order of strength going from lowest to highest is retinol, then retinol, and then prescription tretinoin. So if you're someone who can't tolerate prescription strength and maybe retinol isn't quite strong enough for you, retinol is a really good middle ground. It's effective and the formulations are usually gentle. So a couple of months ago, I switched over to a stronger retinol product. I was kind of nervous about it because I thought it might be too much for me, but I've been using it ever since. This is Medicaid Crystal Retinol. Retinol 6, and I'm excited to partner with them today to tell you more about this. I would be sharing this with you anyway because I've been absolutely thrilled with it. And while I think Medicaid is talked about over in the UK because they're carried in dermatologist offices and professional clinics over there and are based and made just outside of London, we just don't hear about this brand over here in the US nearly as much. And I'm not sure if I ever would have tried this or known about it if they hadn't contacted me to see if I wanted to test it. I'm very thankful for that because I feel like my skin has taken a nice turn. I've had some comments in my comment section asking me, what I've done or you know what I've been using. I have had no in-office anything done. I've added several things to my skincare routine over the past several months that are making a big difference. Everything is cumulative and I'm seeing some really nice changes. What I'm seeing from this is brighter, clearer skin just a few weeks out. I'm sure I'll see more long-term. I'm on the middle strength, so I will increase my strength as I go. It's ideal for all skin types, even sensitive skin, because there are five progressive strengths to choose from. So you can start at the appropriate level and increase, progress as you go. Now, because I was already on another retinol product, my skin was used to it. I did jump in at strength six, but I still eased my way into it. I used it every couple nights at first, then I increased it to every other night and then every night. And that's where I've been ever since. The formula is a slow release encapsulated stabilized formula that releases slowly overnight to maximize your skin's comfort while the retinol is active and doing what it's supposed to do to fight those signs of aging, wrinkles, and dark spots. It's vegan and cruelty-free and contains hyaluronic acid, glycerin, and vitamin E that nourish, soothe, and hydrate. I don't get any dryness from this or redness, which is really incredible. I cleanse at night and apply a couple pumps over my face and neck and give it a little bit of time to absorb. It doesn't take much time at all. It absorbs into my skin and doesn't feel heavy heavy or greasy at all, which is something I love. And then you can follow it with the moisturizer. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I got kind of brave and decided to add in the Crystal Retinol Ceramide 6 Eye Cream. This is their Smooth and Lift eye cream. A lot of times treatment eye creams really dry out my under eye area, but I've been really surprised at how light yet hydrating this feels. I've been using this at night as well. So I'm anxious to see what kind of results I get from this, but so far so good. I've also been enjoying the Press and Glow Daily Exfoliating PHA Tonic and Enzyme Activator and the Advanced Night Ceramide Signature Night Cream. If you're looking for some more products or just want to check out some more to add to your nighttime routine, let me know if you have looked into Medicaid at all, what your thoughts are, but 
I've really been enjoying what I've been seeing so far. I'm anxious to see long-term results, especially as I progress with the strengths. So you can check this out down below in my description box and in my top pinned comment, along with the other products that I'm sharing in today's video, as well as what I'm wearing. If this foundation is being discontinued, I'm gonna be extremely upset. The L'Oreal Age Perfect 4-in-1 Tinted Balm I think is completely underrated. It's beautiful and skin-like and so great for every day for all skin types. I just don't hear nearly as many people talking about this as I do say L'Oreal True Match. I mean, I know that comes in a pump. It's a traditional foundation, but this isn't a typical balm foundation. I don't get along with balm foundations usually but I get along with this. I mean, I have quite a dip in here. I think I probably should purchase another one just in case this is being discontinued. I'm seeing it on sale. I'm seeing a few shades out of stock. Now, maybe that's just a coincidence. All I know is that this has skincare properties because it's serum infused and it's just beautiful with its natural finish. It's great for mature skin and gives light to medium coverage. And it's one of the rare balm foundations that does not break up on my oily combination skin as the day goes on in my hot, humid environment. It doesn't make me overly shiny and it just is beautiful. I don't know if I could rave about this enough. And it's also easy. Easy. It's just easy to put it on and go and just get a nice fresh makeup look. So if you haven't checked this out, no matter your age, no matter your skin type, I really, really think that you would like it. It's also in a nice glass jar. I mean, I could just go on and on and on. I am glad that I checked it out online before talking about it because I'm realizing I do want to get a backup of this in case it is being discontinued. I was debating whether to talk about another drugstore product or another face product after that foundation. I think I'm gonna go with the face product. This is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. Now, I feel like we heard people talking about this right after it launched, but so many new concealers have come out since that it's kind of been pushed back. People don't talk about it as much. And this is a concealer that has really growed on me. I didn't like it that much in my initial review, but it's become one of my most used concealers. Hey Luke, what you doing buddy? I'm back, but I may be filming the rest of this video with a dog in my lap. Not sure how this is going to work, but Luke needed a little love and we're going to give him that. So what was I saying about Huda Beauty? It's become one of my favorite most used concealers that I didn't really like when I applied it with my finger, the warmth of my finger, the way I normally do. That's what threw me off in the beginning. But once I started blending this out with a sponge or even a concealer brush, I really started enjoying it. It's smoothing, it's hydrating, it's flattering. It's not the concealer I'm wearing today, just in case we have something unflattering going on. I'm testing one right now. It also covers well. It kind of just does everything. It's great for daytime, everyday looks or nighttime because of that coverage. It doesn't look heavy, which is what I appreciate. I just am not a full coverage girl when it comes to foundation. And because of that, I don't want my concealer to look very heavy. I really like a natural skin-like concealer. I love that it looks so natural and skin-like, which a lot of these new launches do, but a lot of them give medium coverage, which isn't quite enough for a lot of us. This one gives really, really nice coverage. And I think because it's Huda Beauty, people might think that it's heavier looking or cakey when it's not. I, I definitely feel like this got a lot of hype right after it came out, but I haven't heard that in a while. And I still think it's a really, really great concealer. I reach for it all the time. If you have not tried this because you thought you might look heavy or cakey, you might end up enjoying this as much as I do. Well, that was short lived. He's already on the floor. I guess he had enough. So this is a drugstore blush that I think is fantastic. I love this shade. I'm pretty sure I duped a high-end product with this drugstore blush before. I just don't hear anybody talking about this line or this shade, and I think it's really great. This is the CoverGirl Classic Blush in the shade Soft Mink, and I have shared this on my channel before, though I don't think it was in this type of video, and if so, it's been a really long time. So this is the old packaging. They have revamped the packaging since I got mine. I can't believe I still have the brush in here. I don't use this. I don't know why that's still in there.
hair. This is just a really, really beautiful, soft, neutral, pinky rose. And you can see there's kind of a shift in there. I'm hoping you can see that, but it's not a glitter. It's not a shimmer. It's just a really pretty natural glowy lit from within sheen. But I'm hoping you'll be able to catch here on the swatch. I mean, can we just talk about that blush swatch? Blushes typically don't swatch very well. That almost looks too strong. I wanted to diffuse this out a little bit because it's not like it's a, a glittery metallic looking blush once it's on your face. Although that is what we're getting from this reflection on my hand. I may apply some over what I have on so you can maybe just get the effect. I don't know what it is on my left side. I don't know if I just don't have as high of a cheekbone over here or what the deal is. I can never effectively show you highlighter or blush on the side ever, no matter how my lighting changes. But on the right side, I feel like you can see that little bit of sheen, but it's flattering. I'm hoping that's what you're seeing. CoverGirl has some round blushes that get talked about a little bit more, but I think these are every bit as good. They're really inexpensive and they're underrated and need some more love. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these or any of the products I'm sharing today in the comments. What do you think? Do you like these as much as I do? Especially the shade. I just I love it. This has been the most effective product for smoothing out the bumps that I get on my body on the backs of my arms. I get some redness and bumps in that area as a lot of us do. And I've tried a lot of products for that and some of them will not work at all. Some will work for a period of time and stop working. And some things are just kind of a pain to use to keep up with so then I just stop using them altogether. This is Kopari KP Body Bumps Be Gone with 10%. AHA, but it's not just a manual scrub. It's a chemical and manual exfoliant, but it also has ingredients here that soothe and hydrate. So you're getting that moisture with the exfoliation. I use this on the backs of my arms and on my underarms because we get deodorant buildup there, bacteria buildup, and it just really works well for both of those areas. My arm skin stays smooth when I use this. Now I'll still get some redness if I don't keep up you know, moisturizing really well and using other right products, but this is so effective. So this has glycolic and lactic acids to help shed the dead skin cells and to decongest your pores. It's got coconut shells and pumice and it soothes and hydrates with green tea extract and jojoba oil. There's just a lot of good in here. I have been using it. I'm completely out. I need a new one. There is nothing left in here at all. This actually came out of my shower this morning empty and I thought I need to put it in this video and order a new one immediately because I don't want to be without it and I never hear anyone talking about it. So if you have bumpy skin on your body, that chicken skin, this is just such a great product. When it comes to ColourPop, the perception among a lot of people is that it's a younger brand. They release a lot of trendy products, a lot of collabs. They have a lot of releases pretty often, but they have a few staple core products, evergreen products, if you will, that have stayed around a long time, that aren't trendy, that seem to not be going anywhere that I rely on. And two of those sit here on my vanity. They live here because I reach for them day in and day out. And I don't hear people talking about these nearly as much as they used to anyway, because people have to talk about the ColourPop new releases. So we have Bare Necessities and Stone Cold Fox eyeshadow palettes. These are large neutral palettes. Stone Cold Fox is cool to toned and Bare Necessities is warm. These don't look that used because my 18 year old just went off to college and about four or five, maybe even six months ago, she took my other ones and I rebought them for myself. I have a ton of eyeshadow palettes here in my collection, but these are two that I just refused to be without. I had to immediately rebuy them because I reach for individual shadows in here on a regular basis, whether it's just to line with them or use them on my lid, my crease. The mattes are really creamy and blendable, the typical eyeshadow adjectives that you hear. And the shimmers don't have glitter fallout. They actually perform really, really well, especially for the price of these. Each of these is $35, which for this many shadows is almost unheard of for the quality that you get. I just feel like we used to hear about these. We don't really hear about them anymore, but 
I won't live without these. I think they're tremendously underrated, especially at this point in time. I think I have eyeshadow all over my fingers. These live on my vanity. They're not going anywhere, clearly. I love them and I think you would love them too. I get a little irritated with this next product being so underrated because it's been out for a while. The technology is fantastic, but a lot of people were kind of ugly about it. But then Dyson comes out with their version and everybody is all over it. Like it's the best thing ever. And it's basically the same technology and Dyson costs more. <laughs> so this is GHD, du GHD duet style. I've loved it from the moment I first got it. It's a wet to dry two in one styler. And so a lot of people were saying it was like the old school ones that they tried to create way back in the day that just fried your hair between hot plates before they heard anything about it. They just dismissed it right away. But GHD doesn't create hair tools without taking into consideration hair health. That's just not what they do. This basically straightens your hair with air as you slide it down your hair, but the plates don't heat up while you're doing that. It's just air. Once you're finished drying your hair, you then switch it over to straightener mode where you can then use it as a straightener once the plates are heated. Hair styling is not my forte. I do what I can with the tools that I have and this is something I loved the moment I got it. It straightens really well, it gives me extra shine, and it makes my hair last longer, frizz free longer, and the extreme humidity that I live in here in New Orleans. I don't think you understand quite how humid it is here if you haven't been here, especially in spring and summer and extending into the fall. My hair hasn't gotten more damaged from this and they came out with this months and months and months before Dyson did. I'm sure the Dyson is great too, but it just seemed like everybody was all over the Dyson, completely dismissive of this. And it kind of made me a little bit irritated because this was also great right out of the gate if you use it the way you're supposed to use it, just like the Dyson. There's learning curves with every hair tool, this included, but I mean, I feel like if I can use it, anybody could use it. I've loved it. I think it's extremely underrated and it's probably included in a lot more sales, eligible in a lot more sales than Dyson will be too. I'm sitting here saying that like the Dyson is bad, like I have something against the Dyson Air Straight. I absolutely don't. I'm open to trying it. I haven't yet. I've just been a big fan of GHD tools for a long time. I was really excited when they launched this and I would love to see it get more love from people. I feel like the people that are using it, how it's intended to be used, really see the benefits and truly love it. But the skeptics are just, you know, they're not there. What's a product, one product that you think is extremely underrated? Let me know in the comments down below. A lot of times I'll try those products. Sometimes I agree with you, sometimes I don't. I discover a lot of my favorite products through you, through your recommendations. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. If you like a good makeup dupe, I just released a new dupes video here. If you wanna check it out, I have a lot of great products in there that you seem to be liking based on the feedback from that video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.